President Robert Mugabe, who came to power as the leader of Zimbabwe nearly 40 years ago, is in the custody of the country's armed services in what looks to have been a military takeover. The military has said that Mr. Mugabe, who at 93 is the world's oldest head of state, is safe and that his security is guaranteed. But his future as one of Africa's longest-serving leaders is now in doubt. Mr. Mugabe was born in 1924 in Kutama, northwest of the capital of Harare in what was then southern Rhodesia, a self-governing British colony. His father abandoned the family in poverty when he was 10. He was educated by Catholic missionaries and later attended the same university in South Africa as Nelson Mandela. He was heavily influenced as a young man by the leaders of the Indian independence movement, including Gandhi and Nehru. While at the school, from 1950 to 1952, he decided that he wanted to be a politician. After teaching in what was then northern Rhodesia, now Zambia, and Ghana, Mr. Mugabe returned to southern Rhodesia in 1960. There he joined the movement led by Joshua Komu, who was the patriarch of the African nationalist struggle in the country. He became a leader in it, as the National Democratic Party's publicity secretary, and gave up teaching. At the time, the British government was seeking a path forward in the country, as racial resentment swelled. Mr. Mugabe's stance in favor of political violence put him at odds with Mr. Komu Mr. Mugabe formed the Zimbabwe African National Union. In 1963, Mr. Mugabe and many of his allies were arrested, and he spent 11 years in prison. As Mr. Mugabe was beginning his long term in prison, Rhodesia's white minority, which had won power by opposing African nationalism, unilaterally declared independence from Britain. That government refused to let Mr. Mugabe attend the funeral of his only child, who died while he was in prison, which stoked his resentment of the regime. During his years in prison, he organized classes among the inmates and continued to communicate with members of his party who were on the outside. After his time in prison Mr. Mugabe left Rhodesia in 1975 for Mozambique, which had just attained independence, and worked to win the acceptance of the guerrillas from his political party who in 1972 had begun to fight against the Rhodesian ruling party. Eventually becoming the voice of the guerrilla movement, Mr. Mugabe became known on the world stage. In 1976, he was forced back into an alliance with Mr. Komu under pressure from African leaders, and, after British brokered peace talks in 1979 that established the independent state of Zimbabwe and set the stage for a national election, Mr. Mugabe returned home from exile. Mr. Mugabe was reluctant to agree to the British pact. But he won a resounding victory in the new country's election to become prime minister, after taking pains not to alienate the country's white populace. After taking power, he pledged to oversee a government whose watchwords would be peace and unity. But within the next two years, he dismissed Mr. Komu from his cabinet, as his followers began to battle those of his former ally, 